out of town or not, you guys need a side flick and I was gonna give it to you. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. Yes, I'm still out of town. Taking advantage of the cheap flight tickets that we have right now to go and visit some relatives out of town that I never really get to see. But nonetheless, I am still obsessed with bringing you guys all the movie news going on lately. I did pick a good time to leave my wonderful desk and toys because not a lot has been going on, but there is still so much to talk about, okay? We're gonna be discussing this Mega Man movie, an update on that situation, a small update on the Chucky TV series, one that'll please a lot of fans and a huge update concerning the whole AMC banning universal situation. That is so much more guys. So many of you will leave your opinions down below. What do you think of the movie news we discussed today? What do you think of the room I'm in? I did not want it to be yellow, but I got stuck with yellow, you know, and it's proof. I walked in here. These are pants, not underwear, but also don't be forgetting to hit that like button because uh, there's nothing better than making my girlfriend stay crammed in the bedroom while I go ahead in the living room and make this video for y'all. All right, so the first thing we're gonna dive into is dealing with Disney Plus, the streaming service that maybe not a lot of people tend to go on lately just because it's a lot of older things, things that most people I would think would watch, but hey, if you got a little kid out there, they're probably enjoying the hell out of a Disney Plus. I'm still looking forward to a lot of new content coming to the platform, whether it's the Marvel spin-off shows or some of the movies they have coming up like the Home Alone reboot, and well, one of the newest movies that they have planned for Disney Plus has my attention as a horror fan. This story was provided by The Hollywood Reporter and they have it here that Disney Plus is developing a Halloween supernatural comedy entitled Spooked. Now, even though they have it here marked as a comedy and it's on Disney Plus, so it'll probably be super family friendly, the premise of this movie really intrigues me. The plot that they have for this movie entitled Spook goes as details are being kept in pumpkin head, but it is known that the storyline involves a Halloween night gone awire as trick-or-treaters are transformed into whatever costume they are wearing. Another exciting thing for you, for long viewers of the channel, the script for this movie was written by Tyler Burton Smith, the same man who brought us the Child's Play reboot. And one of the best things I loved about the 2019 Child's Play reboot was the script, the attention to the characters, the emotional factor, and the fact that he did create some pretty horrific scenes, at least on paper, that were translated well to the film. It does kind of remind me of that one Goosebumps story of the little girl who puts on the mask and then is unable to take it off. I know this is completely different in where you'll actually be turning into your Halloween costume. I would have rather have this been a straight up horror movie. Disney Plus, you can get away with it. Kids like to be scared too. But if it's a comedy, I mean, there's so much potential that you could do with it. Just think about all the ridiculous costumes that people wear on Halloween night and the fact that this is also by Disney means they have the license to a whole bunch of characters. We can see people turning into Iron Man, turning into Cap America. But on the other side of that, you'll have your typical witches, your pumpkin heads, your mummies. It'll be a fun little movie come Halloween time when this movie's released. Not this Halloween, because they have yet to make the film, most likely headed for next Halloween. But it looks like Disney is really trying to capitalize on holiday movies to gain new subscribers, because they're also working on the Home Alone reboot, and you know they're gonna drop that movie in December like a Home Alone movie should be during Christmas. Will you guys hear the plot for Spook? Will you be watching this one? One thing I did want to mention because I was getting a lot of messages about this while I was out of town. Yes, I saw that the Terrifier 2 trailer did land online. Now, I know there's probably not a lot of fans for the Terrifier character, or I should say Art the Clown. His movie is very low budget. I think you could still find it on Netflix, but he first appeared in an anthology film entitled All Hallows Eve. He's basically this supernatural clown that is super creepy, very horrifying, and although his movie is yeah very low budget not all that amazing the potential behind this character to me is so big because I am a huge fan of slashers and with slashers there's iconic characters like your Jason Voorhees your Freddy Krueger your Chucky and I'm always looking for the next generation of iconic characters and I believe Art the Clown is one of those so yeah I did see the trailer it still looks a little bit low budget I'm hoping as the movies continue and they gain more fans that yeah the films could start to look a little more polished and clean but nonetheless it looks like a gory fun time it's just a simple straight up slasher but you guys who are fans of Terrifier 2 what did you think of the trailer and people who don't care about Terrifier is this something you'd be interested in even though it's low budget jumping from that to a little something more action-packed 
video game movies I think are done being considered crappy films. For you cinephiles out there, you guys know that video game movies usually tend to suck really bad, are an embarrassment to the genre, and we rarely ever look forward to them, but recently, with movies like Detective Pikachu, that was based on a video game, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, Tomb Raider, video game movies are really stepping out of that cursed circle and are starting to become watchable, enjoyable, build their own fan base, and it seems to have finally helped one video game character who's been having a movie in the works for years, and that is the Mega Man video games. Some of the creators of the Mega Man movie when it was announced eight years ago confirmed during the San Diego Comic-Con panel that they are still attached for this movie and stuff is headed our way. This is exactly what they had to say when asked. We're super excited about it. I think we're going to have some big news about it soon. I can't say all that much right now, but it's a project very near and dear to our hearts, and we're psyched. A lot of us thought the Mega Man movie was cancelled or dead because, well, it was announced eight years ago and nothing has moved forward on the project, but with Sonic the Hedgehog the movie, something might have finally got the wheels turning when they're like, hey, this is the best time to release that movie. Also the fact that it's the co-writer of the Batman, the latest Batman movie, and I think that's gonna be great. So a person like that attached to the Mega Man movie, that seems to reassure me just a little bit. Although I'm not all that familiar with the Mega Man character, I've played his video games here and there, and I'm no stranger to knowing that there's huge potential for that character on the big screen. But for you guys out there with video game movies starting to be better, does this excite you for the Mega Man film, or could you care less about it? Get into some horror movie news, you guys know I. I am super excited for the Chucky TV series. I can't wait for this thing to premiere on the Sci-Fi Channel and the USA Channel because that's how good the show is. It needs two networks. Don Mancini, the creator of the Child's Play TV series, was at San Diego Comic-Con. Only thing that was revealed was stuff we already knew is that yes, it will revolve around the kid cast. Brad Dorif will return to voice Chucky. But one thing he did reveal that is going to please so many fans is that the Chucky TV series will barely be censored even though it's on TV. During his panel, this is exactly what he had to say. When Nick and I set up Chucky at Sci-Fi, one of the first things we had to make sure was that Chucky could drop his F-bombs. Because it's such an intrinsic part of his character, it would seem wrong if he couldn't. Fortunately, before we signed the dotted line, they confirmed, yes, he can. I think he can drop like eight F-bombs per episode, something like that, eight to ten, something like that. I think there's a variation depending on what time it airs. Chucky is known to be the foul-mouthed, disgusting little doll, and I absolutely love that about them. You guys know one of my favorite scenes was in that first Child's Play movie where he finally reveals himself to the mother and the things he calls her. I love that. I would make it my ringtone if I knew how to do it. But people were complaining since Chucky was going to TV that he would be censored, that it wouldn't feel like the Chucky we know in the movies. But if he gets to drop eight to 10 F-bombs, Per episode, boy, that means he could drop as many F-bombs in one episode as he does in one movie. I can't think of one Child's Play movie where Chucky is cursed maybe more than five times using the F-word. He can do it eight times on TV now. Pair that up with the Sci-Fi Channel being able to get away with a lot of gory stuff, stuff that would kind of surprise you since it is a cable channel. I don't think fans have to worry at all about Chucky being heavily censored on the Sci-Fi Channel. He is going to be the same crazy doll that we know and love. So hearing Don Mancini say this, does this make you guys feel better about seeing Chucky on TV or are you still going to wait and see how it looks? Getting to some industry news, so I understand if this is not exciting for a lot of people who just want to hear about their up and coming movies, but this right here is something huge that is going to change the industry. A lot of you might have seen a video I did a couple weeks back, heck it might have been a couple months back, where AMC theaters came out and said that they will be banning all Universal movies from playing playing in their theaters. And the reason they did this is because Universal was one of the first studios during the pandemic to release a movie that was gonna go to theaters and put it straight on VOD for people to buy online and watch at home instead of eventually seeing it in theaters. They did this with the latest Trolls movie, they did it with some of their Blumhouse films like The Haunt and The Invisible Man. This made AMC very upset because if you release your movies at home, it no longer gives a reason for us, the people, to go see it in theaters. I know there's a lot of people watching this channel that are like, hey Chris, I love the theater. I'm going no matter what. That's great. But families of five or six or most people in the US 
would rather go ahead and stay home than go to a theater. I mean, it's the reason Blockbuster went out of business. No one wants to drive to go rent a movie when they can just do it on their TV. So we were all left wondering, dang, when theaters open up, we're not gonna see Universal movies in AMC? That's Fast and Furious, that's Halloween Kills, that's so many awesome movies that we won't get to experience there. Well, The Hollywood Reporter now has it here that AMC and Universal have come to a new deal that is pretty surprising to me. The deal that AMC and Universal have come to is that AMC is gonna go ahead and play Universal movies in their theater, but now, after 17 days, Universal will then be allowed to release their movie on VOD. Before this, it was two months in theaters before you can put it on VOD. That might not sound like a big deal, but take a look at Halloween Kills that comes out on October of 2021. That movie will hit theaters, and then after 17 days, it'll be able to be rented at home on Halloween day. That is crazy and such a short window from theater to at your home to rent. But the reason this deal is the most intriguing to me is because Netflix has hated this rule about having to have their movie in a theater for two months before they can put it on streaming. A lot of you know Netflix is spending crazy amounts of dollars on their movies that they release on their platform. But now with a deal like this, Netflix will be able to release their movies ahead of time in theaters and then about two weeks later allow that same movie to premiere on their platform. And I think that alone will help save movie theaters for a little bit longer because I hate the Netflix model where they just drop a movie at random. There's no more excitement. There's no more hype for it. Heck, tomorrow they could drop a movie with Tom Holland, Chris Evans. It could be some sort of great slasher movie and we never knew it was in the works and they just randomly drop it. That's the way Netflix does it. I'm not a big fan of a new movie appearing on Netflix the same way a new YouTube video does. Now, if you get to see a movie movie exclusively in theaters for two weeks before it shows on Netflix, that gives more people the reason to get Netflix or for us movie fans to experience a film in theaters. I want to know from you movie geeks out there, is this something that you think is a big deal in the industry? What do you think the changes of this deal could mean? Or could you really care less and are you just watching because you like my banana room. You guys go ahead and let me know down below. But that is all the movie news I have for right now, guys. I really want to appreciate you guys who stuck through all this whole video. Even though the sound probably sounds crappy because of this echoey room, I don't have all my equipment, the setup is weird, the color grading is off. You right now who are watching this part of the video are the true fans of the channel and it just means a lot to me. Make sure you guys leave a like on the video, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe for more movie related content, follow me on Twitter at 3 cfilmreview as always, I'm Chris. Take care.